The oldest light in the universe is known as the cosmic microwave background. It is relic radiation from when the universe was very young, a mere 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Patterns in this light tell scientists about the formation of our universe and how it evolved into what we see today. Scientists observe these patterns using large, sensitive cameras, taking pictures of what the universe looked like then, nearly 13.8 billion years ago. One of these cameras is the South Pole Telescope Camera, built by the Department of Energy's Fermilab as part of a collaboration headed by the University of Chicago and in partnership with Argonne National Laboratory. The SPT-3G camera will capture one-fifteenth of the night sky, peering back to the period after the Big Bang when the universe cooled into a thin, diffuse light. We're trying to basically make the deepest, most sensitive map of the cosmic microwave background to make a, have a better understanding of the very early universe. The largest of its kind ever built, the new SPT-3G camera weighs one ton and has ten times more detectors than its predecessor. They act like the CCDs in your handheld camera and will produce a wider and deeper map of the sky than has yet been created from the vantage of the South Pole. The 16,000 detectors that we have on the SPT-3G camera allow us to, to map the sky uh, very efficiently, much more efficiently than than the current, uh, the current generation of instruments allow us. Um, and so we can get a, a very uh, high resolution, very deep map of the cosmic microwave background over a, a short period of time. Light in the microwave frequency is collected by the telescope's primary mirror. It then enters the camera through three giant lenses. The focused light arrives at the detectors, which were fabricated by Argonne National Laboratory. And these detectors are very special. They're microwave detectors. And to be sensitive enough to see the signals that we're looking for, they have to be cooled down to a quarter degree above absolute zero. The SPT-3G camera selects a small patch of sky and photographs it for several hours before moving on to the next patch. Over the course of its five-year run, it will do this thousands of times, capturing 1,500 square degrees of the southern sky. The result is a picture of the universe's earliest light and the minute fluctuations that clue us into the universe's evolution. The early universe was a hot soup, we call it plasma of, of energy, and uh, it, was very, it was very nearly uniform with very small fluctuations um, in, that, in that energy distribution. And so when we look at the cosmic microwave background today, what we see is an image that looks like a Jackson Pollock painting, just splotches, they, they look like small blobs on the, on the sky. Because gravity uh, attracts matter, uh, those small fluctuations grow over time uh, and eventually become the stars and galaxies and planets um, that we know in the universe today. So in a way, the small fluctuations in the CMB are really the seeds for the growth of structure that happens later on in the universe and sort of explains you know, where the structure we see around us comes from. The small-scale fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background can also tell us about subtle particles called neutrinos. For many years, scientists have been working to determine the mass of the neutrino. Data from the cosmic microwave background could have a hand in pinpointing it. Since they constitute a large, significant fraction of the total ma matter in the universe, they affect how that uh, structure forms between us and the cosmic microwave background. So by measuring that deflection precisely, you can learn something about the small effect that neutrinos have, and therefore what the neutrino mass is. In addition to measuring the neutrino content of the universe, scientists on the South Pole Telescope are using it to search for a sign of inflation, the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, during which the universe would have expanded exponentially. So if inflation did happen, then it would have created intense uh, gravity waves that have pervaded the entire universe and would still exist today. And when the cosmic microwave background was emitted, those gravity waves would have created a very unique signature in the polarization of the light of the cosmic microwave background. So by measuring the polarization of the cosmic microwave background in particular, we're able to search for this signal and ultimately try to say something about this very earliest period of inflation in the universe. The South Pole Telescope began its survey in 2018. It images the cosmic microwave background during the South Pole winters, which last from February to November. And it's really the best place in the world to make these measurements because of the unique conditions at the South Pole. So one thing about the South Pole is that it's extremely cold. 
and when the air is cold, it can't hold much water vapor. So it ends up being one of the driest places on Earth. I think it's, it's really amazing that we're at the point today where we have instruments that are sensitive enough to be able to detect these very, very faint features in the cosmic microwave background and learn how the universe evolved from a very early period. And over the course of the next 10 years or so, we're going to have hundreds of thousands of detectors in cameras. So the, there's been a very rapid increase in technology. And what's really nice about working in a field like that is that that increase in sensitivity maps directly onto your ability to measure new things about the universe.